Good morning, everyone, and welcome from the inside of Strain Church this morning as we come together for our Lent reading. This morning's reading on Friday the 19th of March is from uh, John chapter 11, and we're going to read verses 1 to 44 this morning um, for our reading. It's a very well-known story, but I trust that as we listen to it this morning, as we hear this reading from God's Word, that we listen with fresh ears. Let's hear God's word. A man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. This is the Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them away with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was sick. So the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God so that the Son of Man will receive glory from this. So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. But his disciples objected. Rabbi, they said, only a few days ago, the people in Judea were trying to stone you. Are you going there again? Jesus replied, there are 12 hours of daylight every day. During the day, people can walk safely. They can see because they have the light of the world. But at night, there is danger of stumbling because they have no light. Then he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. The disciples said, Lord, if he's sleeping, he'll get better soon. They thought Jesus meant that Lazarus was simply sleeping, but Jesus meant that Lazarus had died. So he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there. For now you will really believe. Come, let's go and see him. Thomas, nicknamed the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let's go too and die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in the grave for four days. Bethany was only a few miles down the road from Jerusalem. And many of the people had come to console Martha and Mary in their loss. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary stayed in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, even after dying, will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I have always believed that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who has come into the world from God. Then she returned to Mary. She called Mary aside from the mourners and told her, the teacher is here and wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to him. Jesus is dead outside the village at the place where Martha met him. When the people who were at the house consoling Mary saw her leaving so hastily, they assumed that she was going to Lazarus' grave to weep, so they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if only you'd been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled within him and he was deeply troubled. Where have you put him? He asked them. They told him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, see how much he loved them. But some said, this man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still angry when he arrived at the tomb. A cave with a stone rolled across its entrance. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he's been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus responded, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of these people standing here so they could believe that you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and his feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in head cloth, cloth. Jesus told him, unwrap him and let him go. 
Amen. It's a very well-known story, the story of Lazarus and Mary and Martha, whenever Lazarus passes away. We know it so well because it's Jesus, it's, it's, it's a very famous story, whenever Jesus wept. And we often use it when we say that Jesus understands our grief when it comes to bereavement. And that is true. Jesus does understand the pain and the loss that we feel. But what is probably the, the hard thing again for us to grab in this story is that Jesus lets Lazarus die because that is the plan. The plan is for him to die so he can be raised again. So Mary and Martha do suffer. And it's hard for us to realize that sometimes that in God's plan, we do have suffering. We do have um, hardship, but that he uses that for his glory and his honor. He uses that to show people who he is and what he can do. In this instance, Jesus raises Lazarus back to life again, but it's only temporary. Mary and Martha are gonna to have to go through that grief again because Lazarus is gonna die again. But when Jesus returns, Lazarus will be raised to new life in a new body, just like Jesus was. And that's what Mary and Martha understood. And they knew that that was the final plan, the end plan as such, because they knew that Jesus is Messiah. But even so, in the in-between time, they had to suffer that pain and that mourning. For all of us, there is pain and mourning in life. For all of us, there is that sadment, that sadness, that grief, that despair at times. But in the midst of all of that, it's realizing that God can use all of that to point people to him. That he can take every situation, no matter how bad it might seem, and use it to show people just how much he loves them and cares for them, just how much he is there for them. And that in the end, if they trust him, everything will turn out all right. Everything will be wonderful and glorious in the end. That's hard for us to really grasp at times. Hard for us to get our heads around. Hard for us to really comprehend. It's about having faith and trusting. Trusting that in everything, God knows what's best. Just like Jesus knew what was best and waited and went. God always knows what is best for us and best for his plan to show the world how much he loves them. Let's today surrender ourselves into God's plan, knowing that whatever comes our way, God is with us and he will use it. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for again for your word this day. Thank you again for how it teaches and tells us about the plan that you have um, for all of this world and how you include us in that plan. Lord, yes, at times that plan is hard and difficult, so we need to walk in faith with you. Help us to do it this day, the rest of this week, the rest of our lives. Lord, we surrender to your will, now and always. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Thanks, folks, for joining with us this morning um, as we've been reading through God's word. Um, no reading tomorrow morning, it's Saturday, day off. And then on Sunday at 11 o'clock, we will be um, live here on Facebook. Um, sorry, it'll be recorded service here on Facebook at 11 o'clock. It'll also be up on YouTube at 11 o'clock as well. Um, all being well, so please join in with us for that. Also keep an eye out for announcement with regards to Easter Sunday and to, with regards to the reopening of the church. Um, I'll be making an announcement about that on Sunday and then a post will be going up again on Facebook and onto our website. So thank you for watching, and in the meantime, folks, take care and God bless.